I'm here in Vegas, Nevada with Tempo Storm members Zuna and Arthalon. Uh, a little bit of a throwback for me. I used to interview these guys when they played a different game. I forget which game. Either way, uh, they just beat Cloud9, uh, longtime rivals. Uh, Zuna, you're, you're in Vegas, which is, I believe, your hometown. Is this correct? Uh, was there any, like, Vegas energy, hometown energy up on stage, or is that just, like, a myth? Uh, there wasn't too much. Even my family, we were the first game of the day, and then we were the second last game of the day. So, like, I was like, oh, yeah, you guys are going to have to wait seven hours. I was like, yeah, we'll watch you at home. So I didn't have any support. <laughs> there you go. That's that's what that's really what carried you was the lack of support. Arthalon, uh, you guys had lost games against Cloud9 recently, though normally you guys have a, a pretty good record against them. Uh, what allowed you guys to bounce back today and and win uh, on stage? Uh, I just think on stage when we really prepare and are really ready to play, we just play out of our minds and you know a lot better than we ever could online. Yeah. One of the things that's interesting uh, for you guys is that. I, I, my understanding is very few team houses in Heroes of the Storm. You guys are one of the few that do have that. Uh, how, how much do you think that affects you, you guys here? And is any of that because you used to play League and you saw it there, or, or sort of what motivated the team house? Um, I joined late, so it happened way before me, but I think team house is really good if you use it correctly. But for us, I think it's more of like we're just five roommates chilling. Okay. And do you guys use it correctly, Arthlon? Uh, I wouldn't say so. It's sort of just like you get to live rent-free without any like outside stress or, you know, you just get to focus on the game. Yeah. I think that's the biggest part. So it's just kind of like a easy convenience thing at this point. Right. I would say fair, so, yeah. Fair enough. Now, what, what do you guys think of Cloud9 after that game? Because a lot of people felt like they were getting pretty strong. You know, what's your opinion now? I think Cloud9 is still a really strong team. It just when it comes to a certain point of like figuring out a certain meta, we usually beat are better than them at figuring it out and playing it. And unless we play like a best of 15, then we always come out ahead usually. Arlon, I know there were a little uh, unusual picks in that. You want to talk a little bit about why you guys picked the comp and the heroes that you picked? Um, once we saw their Abathur, we knew that if we had a really aggressive comp with high damage, that we'd be able to basically just beat it because they wouldn't have an answer for it. And on top of that, when we did pick Sonia, we also took it away from them because they really like Sonia Abathur. So, at, so we got a really strong pick, and we also crippled them at the same time. Yeah. Now I know they picked but Butcher, which was interesting, and then you turned around and picked it back. Was there any element of did you pick that because they had picked it, and you were like, let me show you how it's done, or you know what what went into that pick? Pretty much, I was just like, I right, you lost with Butcher, I'll show you how to win with it. Very good, very good. I like it. Uh, what what is it like to be? You know, at a, at a Heroes event like this, knowing that this is sort of leading into BlizzCon, is this uh, like a very big deal for you guys, or is it just another tournament? Um, it's definitely a big deal. Making a BlizzCon is like what matters. The way I see it is like in League for like relegations, like if you lose, you're just shit out of luck. But for this one, it's like if you if you lose, you're just not going to BlizzCon, so you're doing nothing. So you have to win no matter what. Now, Arlon, I, I don't, I haven't been following like the international scene too much for Heroes. Uh, I'm very used to video games that involve Chinese and Korean teams winning a lot. Uh, can you give me a little bit of insight into how America teams kind of fare against the international guys? Uh, the Chinese and Korean scene and teams are very, very strong. I think if we do fully prepare for it, though, like NA does stand a really good chance against them. Um, you know, they have better teams to compete against. You know, their top five teams are way above beyond our top five. Yeah. But I think the number one teams across all regions are fairly close yeah. at the moment. How much do you guys look at those teams for inspiration? I, I know in your press conference you mentioned a little bit that you guys had looked at one of their comps even. Um, for me, I like to watch all type of uh, scenes. So, like, especially if they're considerably the strongest, I'll watch them and just study and be like, oh, that looks cool, I'll try it. And sometimes it play, pays off. All right, so we'll kind of wrap this up with tomorrow. What do you guys think about tomorrow? What are your chances, et cetera? Well, pretty much it's just if you win your first best of three, then you make it a BlizzCon, and then if you win after that, you get the the grand prize, which is about, I think, eight grand per person compared to compared to like 4.2 or something, So, or five grand, I think. I don't know. Just really want to win it. money. You get money. <laughs> yes. Money. You get more money if you win, but... Pretty much my whole goal is not even C9 right now because we can't play him in the next round. It's just literally beating the next person no matter what. And then after that, focusing on C9. Very good. Well, hey, uh, great to talk to you guys again. It's been a little bit, uh, but congratulations on your win. For everyone else, you can check out the rest for coverage of the Heroes of the Storm tournament here in Vegas at GameSpot.com.